everybody, welcome to the Sam Livecast. Do you know what today is? Nope. Somebody told me. I don't know. It's Wednesday. You don't tell us. It's, How are we supposed to know? It is Wednesday. It's yeah. Wednesday, boys, in the back, and we're in the middle of spring pasta week. Is that, what yes. call, is, that what, is that what this is called? It is. I think that's what you called it. Uh, spring pasta week. And by the way, the pasta that I made the other day by myself. I got boy, the should we just talk about up. that for a second? Yes. Go uh, ahead. Just let me say hi to you guys back there. Let me see your smiling faces. People like to see that you're there at We're the top here. of the Hello, show. Everybody. There you are. What's up, team? Max, Master Chef. Mm -hmm. Everybody good? Very good. I, I have a name, you know. <laughs> We're looking forward to uh, what we see on TV tonight with you, Master Chef Lynn. Yes. yes, tonight's the episode where we cook for little school kids. MC, oh. three hundred of them. Why did you have to tell me that? It's on the preview. It probably says. I in haven't the seen synopsis. the previews. Do you not know? I'm the kind of guy I like to go to a movie just knowing it's a good movie. I don't really care what it's about. Well, I don't need to know. If I told oh, you it's a western and this happens and that happens, so you would go to a movie not knowing the genre. Not knowing who the actors were or that's the premise he, of the yes, movie. That's like how he do does that. it. Yes, absolutely. Yeah, that's how he does it. He just wants to go in with a completely blank slate. Completely Which is fresh. how my mind is most of the time. Yeah. Completely blank. Anyway, mm -hmm. uh, we all couldn't get together to shoot Monday's show, so I took it upon myself to do it. There's my photograph. It's a good photograph. The, uh, thank you. Asparagus and pea, a uh, little with a little lemon cream sauce on the, uh, on the uh, penne. Mm -hmm. Super delicious. Apparently, I took the picture wrong because Max bitched me out. <laughs> I did not. I got <laughs> instructions on how to take pictures. Don't take them this way. Take them this way. Do there it upside go. down. Don't yeah, right way listen. around. Whatever it was. <laughs> whatever it is. I'm just going to do what I'm going to do, and it's up to you to figure out how to make the picture okay. right. But I, I shot the show by myself. I set up the cameras, the lights. It's not like it's a lot of work, but it's, it's stuff that I normally don't end up doing. Let's look at a little piece of it. I thought I did okay. I think you did okay, actually. I did, did okay. One I second. got lights right. okay. I decided what I needed to do because there wasn't going to be anybody on a camera. What was that? Is that a weird noise? Yes. It's coming up. Hold on. Okay. Sorry. Because there wasn't going to be anybody are. on the camera, I needed to have all the shots uh, set myself. So, oh, look at that when I cross in front of that camera. The that's single a little, live cast. That's a little ugly, but it's okay. No, it's kind of cool with the but three it, cameras But it going. worked out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's yeah. pretty damn funny. I like it. Yeah, uh, and by the way, how good was that pasta? Max ate some of that. I got I got in today and I ate the entire thing. I think actually a not some. I ate it. the you rest did. of you it. You ate a lot of it. It was really good. Yeah, it really was uh, really fresh, and I think that goes. It with was. That was the whole spring week. thing. Yeah. So today, uh, Lynn has already scoped the watercress on the back counter. That uh, can you even see it? It's that little tiny thing. Oh, there you go. Yeah. So I'm using watercress. I'm using. Um, scallops Ooh. little baby scallops little bay scallops and i'm using orzo boom orzo. Dig orzo. what K orzo yeah chaos orzo or orzo or is very well you'll find a picture of it it's very oh here's hold on i can do this orzo pasta right. it, it's very, but look at it here it looks it looks like rice did your mic fall dude no. No, my mic's right there. It does look like rice. Okay, I'm on the big mic now. Hold on. No, I, I seem to be okay. No, we're good. We're good. Okay. We're good. Uh, it looks like rice. It's, in fact, pasta, so it fits into Pasta Week. And it was, Orzo was something my mom used to cook all the time at home. I've never cooked it once. But I didn't want to just do regular pasta, regular pasta, regular pasta. So I thought I would do this. Is orzo by any chance the um, type of pasta they use in a risotto? No, that's is our, that's that a, that's similar? a rice. That's is a, it just a flat? That's I thought, arborio rice. Okay, I thought maybe because if you look at it closely, it looks like it could be just like a larger type of rice. It does, but it's not. It's actually a pasta itself. Okay. Cool. So I'm using orzo and scallops, and I've not made the uh, oh, a. I've never cooked uh, orzo before. B, I've never made this before. C, I thunk it up a little bit more than an hour or a couple hours ago. And I think it's going to be great. I, hey. So we'll get to that. But we've got some other things to get to first. Before we do, yes. thank you to everybody in advance for telling your friends. We don't have an advertising budget, and you guys are that budget. So we thank you for doing that. Mm. <laughs> Good job, Maxie. Go ahead. <clears throat> All right. First things first, let me read this. This comes from Marjorie Owens. To Sam, the subject line is Lynn with an exclamation point. Oh, jeez. Uh -oh. And the letter reads, Sam, we are big fans of yours and we really enjoy the live cast. 
We tried sending this email below with pictures to Lynn. Could you please pass it along to him? A big hug to you, Kelly, Max, and Lynn. Oh. And here's what was sent. It's so cute. Oh. Damn it. There you go. Look at that. Oh, <laughs> my God. Look hey, at the kids. That's cool. Are you kidding Look me? Look at that. And they taped a Go Lynn thing up there. I got the, fans. There's <laughs> Lynn. He's really got fans. 16 inches taller than whoever the hell is in front of him. <laughs> Well, hey, now that cool, these though. kids are watching, I better watch my language. Oh, God. That's really cool. And wait, go back to that for a second, because there are two things. And there's the hand drawn oh, to what? Awesome Lynn. Are you kidding me? No, I'm not. That is... From Jacqueline Owens. Is that amazing? That is way How amazing. How cute is that? Shit. And look at that. I'm speechless. Lynn, cool. you got the little Master Chef apron on, and they captured your arrogant, <laughs> selfish <laughs> attitude with the bubble above your head saying, I rule. I rule. <laughs> Kids, you don't know how true that statement is about Lynn. <laughs> oh, come on, man. Okay, it's not true at all. Lynn is not like that. But how cute is that? Oh, That's yeah. amazing. Is that amazing? That's amazing. Yeah, it's great. Wow. It's cool when people appreciate stuff that you've done, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Hey, thanks for that. Thanks, thanks for putting that up on the air. Go back to that picture, though. What's coming out of your head there? It's a toque. Is it, is it broccoli? It's a chef hat. The toque. Oh, it's yeah. a chef toque. What is it called? Oh, a toque. I didn't know <laughs> it's that. like black broccoli. What's the thing in the back? I'm trying to look at. I, I got to get a, a table closer. with your stuff. This thing. Yeah. That's all your utensils and things. I think nice. so. And I'm not sure, but it nice. looks like they've already awarded you the trophy right Master there, Lynn. Trophy. <laughs> is that not what that is? You just have to tune in to find out to see if that see really if does that happen. happens. All right, we'll save the Master Chef stuff for the next show. <laughs> yes, yes. Friday. Don't forget, that. Fridays is our day to recap what went on in Master Chef on Wednesday nights. Uh, hang out with us here, and uh, we'll take all good care of it. Now, speaking of awesome things, can we take a look at this picture of a mango that I took yesterday? I was so happy with it. I had to post Damn. it. The picture of the mango. The mango You know pick. what? It looks like it came like that. It didn't come it like that. It looks like it was meant to just come with like little bites to eat. No, that's a champagne mango that I got from Specialty Produce. Uh, Kelly makes herself a little fruit salad in the mornings, and she doesn't like cutting mango because she says she doesn't know how. Mm. So I think it's just because it's kind of messy and sticky and whatever. And she said, well, you cut the mango. And I pick up the knife, and she goes, I like it in little squares. <laughs> <laughs> so I did that thing. When you hold it in your hand, and you put the X's in it, and then you sort of turn it inside out, yeah. and it makes those squares, and then you just cut those off. That mm. looks like literally a perfect mango. There's, Isn't doesn't, it? It doesn't look mushy. No, it doesn't no look, mushy. It was amazing. It looks crisp. And you know what? I will say that those, those champagne mangoes don't look that great. Oh, I got one. Really? Hold on. Hold on. I was going to say, another way to do that, uh, another way to eat a mango is obviously just to take a spoon and get in there underneath all of the meat of the mango. Right. And then you just kind of scoop out a big thing. Basically the same way that we do avocados. So right. <laughs> same thing. I don't, I don't have one. I'm sorry. I okay, thought, no I, thought I have. But, but generally look kind of wrinkly. They're all yellow. Yeah, yeah. Champagne mangoes. They're all yellow on the outside as opposed to the ones that have some green and some red and some yellow and stuff. To just them. like but that? Just like that. There they are. But how do you know if they're ripe? Well, they're, you know, it's sort of that avocado type thing. They yield to gentle pressure. Got it. Right. You want, to be able, you want to feel it go in a little bit. And by the way, now that I'm here and I'm doing this and I'm thinking about checking a steak, mm -hmm. my whole thinking about this, the poke test on steaks, has completely changed. Don't do it. Just buy yourself a really good uh, instant read thermometer. Did you check wrongly? No, it's, you know what it is? It's not that I checked wrongly, but what I figured out is different types, different cuts of meat have different uh, levels of firmness. They do. So, you know, pushing on a, on a filet when it's perfectly medium rare is not going to push the same as a New York or as a flat iron or a tri-tip that I made the other day. The safest way, get a thermometer, pull the thing off the heat when it's at 128, 29, 30 degrees. Let it rest for a few minutes. You'll be very happy with the medium rare that you found inside of it. Hey, speaking, very of, happy. speaking of steak, yeah. everybody should get really excited for the Father's Day video coming out soon. Oh, look at that. Whoa, my God. The Bed Bath & Beyond blog, blog.bedbathandbeyond.com. That will be there. That's a flat iron chimichurri. Really, really delicious. I made that a three times in the past couple of weeks. I can't, I can't stop making it. It is so good. But wait, in, the, uh, in Monday's show... I talked about something that I was going to do with a tri-tip. I was going to try reverse sear. Do you know what that is, Master Chef? Mm -mm. mm. A reverse sear is where you sear it first? No. Last. Yes. 
Cook you it cook all, it on. Then... You cook it on uh, indirect heat. Try and get it to about 120 degrees. Then you finish it on the sear. And the thinking is that it lets you get to a more even level of doneness on the inside, mm-hmm. rather than having you know like perfect in the middle, but the gray here and the gray here. So kind of like when you sous vide a steak. Right. right. A, a little bit and like that. You exactly. take it out and you do the end sear job. Right. So, right. Kind of like that, but you're trying to perform that, that function on, on a grill, right? Got it. I, I didn't do a real good job. I did an okay job. I was unhappy with the way it turned out. But I was also making about six other things at the same time. Not the least of which was the blue cheese macaroni that is on the website that we've made here on the live cast that you oh, have yeah. to make. Cast, I'm cast iron pan in the oven. Oh, my God. Yes. Bacon, onion, blue cheese, panko crust on top with mixed with a little butter. It's unbelievable. All right. <clears throat> Do you know what this is? Mm, it's a piece of paper. Take a look at the, uh, the computer screen. Oh. That? That's a that's a outside of a toilet. Mm-hmm. And in there how is can say, how can you tell? You know what that is? is that a, a dog in there? This is a shot from the Houston Astros. Um in the middle of one of their games. That is a cell phone shot of the snow cone vendor. Oh my god. Who took his rack of snow cones that he's about to sell into the bathroom with him. Gross. Set it down on the floor. Gross. Went number whatever he did, then picked it up and left. Gross. That's real bad. Oh my god. That's real bad. That's a new meaning to lemon snow cone right there, man. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> oh god. This is what? all just kind of goes together with What how where is the thinking? What's the guy's it, the guy's fired, by the way. Okay. But is by that, the way. What's worse? That or the guy kicking his feet up on the table that you were <laughs> eating dinner? At that place, or you know what? the pizza guy who pulls toppings off of a pizza with his mm-hmm. fingers and eats them before he delivers the pizza. What kind of world are we living in? Jesus, what? Where's the thinking? And you know what? Upon questioning, what did he say? Probably, I don't know. I was in there. I washed my hands after. Really? I what? washed my hands. But the but the box of snow cones is on your feet. Is right beside, dude. The whole the, the whole concept. Is so uh, disgusting. I won't even bring like an open drink into the bathroom, let alone put it on the floor. Oh my god, that's gross. Uh, it's horrifying. Let's get away from that. Oh. Look at some pictures of vodka. I've done this once before, and I may have done some of the same pictures, but I am, I am blown away by what's going on with vodka in the supermarkets these days, in the stores, the flavors that they're coming up with. We we can don't even need to guess what this one is. Gummy bear. Ugh. Who ever thought that that was going to be a good idea? Well, that's okay. That's a thing. Oh, that's because it's it's part of a cultural. Maybe thing. the people yeah. that thought salted freaking caramel. No, no, no. Vodka really, was going to be a good really idea. Really quick, really quick to go yes. back to the gummy bear flavor. Yes. You don't, wouldn't know this, I don't think, because you're old. <laughs> <laughs> but kids take, or I don't want to say kids. People, young people take gummy bears yes. and put so them gummy. into a bottle of vodka. Yes. And then you just leave that there for your entire night or an entire day. And then you take the bottle and I guess it. It flavors the vodka flavored, and then you get to yes. eat the gummy bears later. Or you do it with Jolly Ranchers. Too, well, right? the, I think. No, no. Who, is that the, a good. The, the premise is this is that you girls. can take a, a thing of gummy bears onto yes. like, you know, the railway or like on the way to school, but you can't take a bottle of vodka. So oh, people wait. are getting drunk off of like gummy bears at school. Wait, no, no, okay, that's a whole different thing than what I was talking about. I was just saying that I thought they were putting them in there to flavor it. No, I've no, seen no. people do that. The gummy bears will soak up all the vodka. Right, in whatever you grow. put in the vodka yeah. is going to oh. soak it up. It's like little jello shots. And oh, then, wow. hey, then it's a lot easier. Remember there was that thing a couple months back, the teenagers were pouring vodka. Sorry. Tampons. Yeah, tampons. What? And, yes. So now they just have to insert a gummy bear. <laughs> Gross, oh my dude. god all right let's continue with these horrifying flavors yeah right so we've got this now we've got the salted caramel Ugh. how about this one you know what that one is loopy what do you think that is fruit it's loops? freaking fruit loop flavor Jeez. please Cupcake. lemon chiffon cake Mm-mm. oh god okay, <laughs> sorry wow hold on i got it oh that's due 
<laughs> oh, that's doing it. Yeah, yeah, keep, keep messing with too. your calendar, dude. Sorry, okay. <laughs> Lemon chiffon. Wait, how about this one? Grapevine? This one Grape was um, dragon fruit. Oh, I can see it on there, yeah. See the, right. There's a little dragon fruit, and it looks like grape or something. Absolutely grapevine, fruit. probably. Gra dragon fruit and grape. Oh, iced cake. Jeez. Whipped freaking cream the funny thing is you went through the whole rack just doing this right in the grocery store just standing there taking <laughs> pictures with people looking at me going what are you doing yeah well while we're speaking about alcohol let's talk about this yeah what is that we both you know what for anybody who wants to know lynn and i both walked in today and <laughs> gravitated right to that bottle for some the first reason. thing you guys saw awesome. yeah, we both went, it looks oh, good it by the this? way that's a good looking bottle right i love the shape of it i love the label design i like the stuff on the back of it it's called root so uh, the other day was Matt Gordon's birthday from Urban Solace. And he's a good friend of our show. He's been a good friend of mine for a long time. Um, I went past what will be his new restaurant. Well, I guess it is his new restaurant. It's not open yet. See and Smoke today. And I took him this because I wanted to give him something. It's organic. You know, he appreciates alcohol and stuff. Before I saw Matt, I saw his, his wife, Young Me. We we're talking for a second. She goes, what's that? And I go, I brought this for Matt. I take it out of the bag. I go, I got this for him. She kind of went like this. Oh. <laughs> I go, what? She goes, well, we had the other one they make. They make another one called Rhubarb. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's organic. She goes, it's okay. It's kind of sweet. I go, oh. Really? She's not going to really like this. She goes, no, no, no. It'll be fine. And, so I handed it to him. I let him see it. And I said, I'm taking it back. So you're not going to like it. And you know what? He didn't stop me. Yeah. <laughs> really? He did not stop me at all. So we're really? going to drink it. <laughs> That's try. hilarious. He was just like, yeah, okay, sure. He was, yeah, he was completely there with me. So really? I believe. No, it was like one of these, oh, come on. Don't do that. Not Are even. Sure? No, he yeah. didn't even try that hard. Oh, okay. <laughs> He didn't even try that hard. So <laughs> this hilarious. is hilarious. You and Matt have a really funny relationship. Wow. I'll be honest. This completely smells like root beer. One hundred percent. It doesn't smell strong. It doesn't smell strong. God, those are the best little espresso. I, I can't glasses. wait to try this. I, I. Well, one of you guys can come get this for the other two. Matt of you is guys. missing out. Whatever. Well, I think they were they were colored by that. Is it for net like? That's what off I'm thinking. Off flavored. Uh, I I don't know. I'm a, we're about to find out. But all I'm getting right now. Is root beer like full-on root beer? So we'll all take it, get us all up, and then we'll uh, we'll take a picture of that. It's Ready? I love root beer, so this will be. Great. Have a sip, hey boys. Cheers. Cheers. Who said it wasn't for net like? I didn't say that. Oh, okay. I said I don't know. I've never had it. It, it oh, is okay. it is sweet. It is sweet. But there's sugar clearly written on the bottle. Wow. It's like root beer fernet. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It really is. I think it's really good, man. I think I'd like it cut a little bit. It's At least an ice cube or two. It's got a kick. That's for it sure. definitely does. Well, it's 40%. Per, it's 40%. Yeah, I, I think... An ice cube be perfect, actually. An ice cube, maybe a little soda or something. Club soda. A little soda. Maybe a little ginger ale, oh, rice. It's really warm right here. Oh yeah, isn't it? <laughs> we haven't actually had a drink on the show in a long time, man. No. That's true. That used to be ritual. Remember well, that time you, you, you hung out with Woody? Oh Prost. man, yeah, yeah. yeah. We got a little not good. <laughs> a little sloth. All right, uh, one more, couple more pictures. Okay. Mm hmm. Hold on couple more and then it's time to head into the kitchen do you know what that is it's a donut <clears throat> red velvet something it's not a donut it's not a donut it's a are you close it's a small cake like thing it's a cronut mm. oh yes it's a cross between a croissant and a donut i've heard of this and i'm going to show you where these things come from and they're blowing up or something right they come right from here we're just going from dessert thing to dessert thing to Hold dessert on. thing. They came right from here, a, a, a bakery in New York, Dominique Ansel Bakery. Uh, Dominique is a French guy. There he is. He invented the cronut. Wow. The cross between a croissant and a donut. Okay, you know, I can't he lie. He trademarked you. the name. Uh -huh. I, I can't lie, dude. You knew what it was? No, I, I, I kind of wish I would have thought of this. <laughs> oh. It, it's, it's a little like... 
like you know, it's a novelty thing. Well, let's put it this way: the hipsters in New York are going crazy for well, it. Yeah, that's what I'm just, saying. Why don't we just make Cruffins? Well, I mean, here's the deal. Good, like, he it's... trademarked the name. Wait, here's another. Uh, he trademarked the name Cronut. Yeah. Uh, and here's a, wait. Here's another shot of him. Hold on. <laughs> I just Googled that's a, there's an inside right. So now here's what's happened. People can't use Cronut. So what they've come up with is dosant instead of <laughs> croissant and donut donut and croissant dosant he didn't oh trademark that too he didn't trademark well, that cronut craze creates black market right it's insane the intrigued. hipsters in new york are going crazy to get these things jeez i mean wow. it's all part of this okay how long until it's no longer the talk of the town and well, that high in demand uh, five minutes i know i mean that's the thing Every, whoa, it was whoa. cupcakes and then it was donuts and now it's cronuts. Now it's cronuts. This, How long the, did that this last? This five minutes for this Dominique Ansel guy yeah. in New York is going to make him a millionaire. Well, probably, yeah. So, oh, you know, so that's what... I guess. I mean, I don't know. Corolla was saying that this new thing, everybody's 15 minutes has now turned into everybody's three-day weekend <laughs> with YouTube and the internet and yes, social media and everything. So, but, the, but there's also the you thinking that... You can leverage that, that into this. Right, but there's also the theory that, that because of the internet, your 15 minutes can come and go really fast with so many people seeing it, right? Yes. Like what might have spread more organically back in the day now, takes a, now, now happens a lot faster. But what's that expression? Nothing kills a, a bad product faster than good advertising. You ever heard that line? No. I think I'm getting that right. What? And basically what they're saying is if it's a shitty product, really good advertising is going to bring people to it and they'll know that it's crappy right off the bat and it will end faster than, than anything. Interesting. So, you know, now you could say that things come and go fast because of the internet. Fast because it gets it out there quick, but if it's stupid, then people recognize its stupidity faster and maybe be done with it faster and then just start making fun of it faster. Mm-hmm. That's true. I mean, I think a good indicator and barometer of that is like at the end of the year, YouTube has kind of their year end review. Yeah. And there's an unbelievable amount of content that you watch like, oh, I kind of remember that. And then like, wait a minute, I, I right. don't actually remember that. It may have came for like five minutes. You know, my moment on the Today Show with Kathy Lee Gifford and Hoda Kopi. Oh, yeah. Which I felt like up to a couple months ago had like 700,000 views and it's now like over 900,000. I don't mm. know what happened. Something happened that brought it up to the forefront again. But that made it into an AOL online end of year review for the best TV moments. Mm -hmm. It did? Yes. Really? It's like in the top 50 or 100 or something. Like that. That's kind of cool. Mm. Maybe is, is that, have people been seeing it or? I don't know, but no, but this is, it's old now. It's four years old. Yeah, it's super old. Right. It's not even in HD. <laughs> All right, time for the kitchen. Uh, time for the kitchen. Uh, mm -hmm. I'm ready. Well, one more picture. Okay. Who knows what this is? <clears throat> Just, just put it there, look at it, think about it for a, sec for a second. I don't know if you're ever going to get it. If MasterChef gets it, it's... Well, I see GQ in there. It's because he's seen it before. Because I don't think this is intuitive at all. It's GQ PC. I'll just tell you this. Uh, will this help? I was trying to figure out some liquid measurement equivalents today. Oh, four, qu four quarts in a gallon, yeah. two pints in a quart, two, two cups, cups in a pint. There you go. And this was the, the mental picture. It's really not intuitive. That they suggested, no, until you know that, right? Yeah, yeah. Well, it is now. I mean, we've been staring at it for about a good minute. It I think I can, like I can memorize it. It's just that. That's all it is. Two cups in a pint, two pints in a quart, four quarts in a gallon. The thing is, I... What? I feel like this is something you just kind of... No memorize in school no well if you have a tiger mom maybe this was not drilled into my head at any school i well, went we into I, I just asked siri really long time. i just <laughs> I, I literally I did that last night when i was cooking how many teaspoons in a tablespoon so you don't need to know anything hey wait anymore. a minute what are you doing that for just use your hand <laughs> who cares well what were you making what was i making that i needed to do it? oh i was making a white sauce oh <laughs> excuse me uh, a white sauce uh, a beurre blanc <laughs> 
I, I think what'd you, you call need to know Master that kind of Chef? Stuff. When you when you, you cook, you need to know that kind of off the. Cuff. You got Master Chef's direct number. Just call him. <laughs> then his point is that you don't need to me- measure. I'm just saying. <laughs> Measuring stuff like is that, yeah. not important. Okay, I gotta get I gotta get the orzo and the thing. I don't know how long it's gonna take. It's probably gonna take me longer than I need. But I got one thing I want to do while it's getting ready. So let's go. I'm ready to cook. We just had to try a little bit more. We're enjoying it. Um, so here's what happens. We go from the table to the meat coming over here. They set some cameras and stuff. And I got all excited and everything. I just cut the top off of this and dumped a bunch of the, the orzo in. So just know that here, here's what orzo looks like. There you go. It's pasta. It looks like rice. They're all the exact same shape. It's pasta. And now it's going to be in this water. And because I've never cooked it, I really don't know. I think it's maybe 10 minutes or so. So, um... I need to cook some scallops too. I don't want the scallops done until the orzo's out. So we're just gonna wait until this is ready. Drain it, then, uh, then get it in a bowl, and then we'll be set. But in the meantime, I turn this burner on right here. Let me see if I can do this, hold on. Move this so Max can see a little bit better. I turn this burner on right here for something. I wanna cook something I've never cooked before. It's not all that exciting. I got to get out of the fridge, Max. Sorry. You ready? So many firsts for this live cast. So many firsts. Uno, right here on my hands. Uno, dos, tres. Boom. Quail eggs. Oh, quail gosh. eggs. You've never tried quail eggs before? I've n- no. Uh, I didn't say that. I said I've never cooked a quail egg. Oh, true. You never. Wow. Have you? Yes, I have. Never. It's big in the Korean market. Is that where you got yours? I got these at, no, at Vaughn's had these. Vaughn's? Really? Yeah, they've really stepped up their game in there. They're really oh. trying to be. Or a safe way for those who For safe way. So now, Lynn, am I believing that these cook just like regular eggs? Yeah, they're just. They're just little. Smaller. I had an idea about doing something with one of these things once, and I never did it. And so now I need a little bit of butter. Let me get a shot of it so I can show everybody. They're, they're cute. I need like the like the world's smallest spatula though. <laughs> Those are cute, yeah. Yeah, you do. Okay, so here we go. Watch this. Uh, I don't want that. I need a little butter. I'm gonna cook it in a little butter. I probably don't want this too hot. I mean, it's an egg, so it's just gonna be the same thing, right? Just smaller, yeah. You might want to cook two. <laughs> Look at that. <laughs> that is the cutest damn thing I've ever seen in my life. It's a little baby. I'm so glad something furry didn't come out of that, man. That would have really Gross. sucked. A little salt. That's awesome. Look at that. A little pepper. Oh, my God. Max, like, hold on. You weren't, you know, standing next to it. it. It just looked like a normal egg. Right. Okay, this opens up a whole world of possibility for me now. For like a, for event stuff. I, I can't believe they sell quail eggs at Vons. They sell quail eggs. I'm thinking like. Are they supposed to be special? Uh, well, they're just they're small. Yeah, they they weren't. I mean, they're for like you know pass hors d'oeuvres or little tiny sandwiches or. Right. If you wanted to do something with a watch here, if you wanted to do something, um, I don't know, like a little tiny a little uh, slider, right? Yeah. Oh, look it. Holy shit. That's just like a perfect little baby egg. Or it's a really big bowl, one of the two. But watch, stay there. Now there's the fork, right? It looks like a, no- it looks like a normal egg until the fork comes into it, <laughs> which is a giant fork. Do they taste the same? Yeah, I think so. I mean, they're a little milder, I think. Let's find out. Dude, that's just an egg. Yeah. A, a beautifully sized little guy, though. Mm. Okay, that made me really happy. Okay, here's our. Uh, there's the um, orzo. Let's see how it looks. Let's see if we think it's ready. Ow, 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 ow. That looks hot. Orange, oh, perfect. Okay. Let me get it out of that. 
And I'm going to steal a little bit of the water just in case I need it for something. There. Now the real question is, where's your ostrich egg? Oh, we shit. We need one of those. Did you have to do that on MasterChef? Or no, can you not tell us? Uh, there, there was a, a guy that brought in ostrich, though, on the show. He was in the beginning. Really? And he made a giant ostrich egg frittata. Oh my god, that is so good. Oh, I think I saw that. I feel like I saw that. Okay. So now here's what we've got. I've got the, uh, the, the orzo. And I guess what I'm going to do is I'm going to put it in a bowl and toss it with a little oil. Will I have a sip of my root? By the way, quick thought. Vitamix blender, ice cream, and that root, alcohol in it. Root beer milkshake, 40% alcohol by volume. You know how good that would be? <laughs> Do it. <laughs> God, that would be good. That would be great. Okay, so orzo goes in there. And this is meant to be, a, you know, this doesn't necessarily have to be a super hot uh, pasta. This could be room temp or something, but... Okay, so it's just going to get a little really delicious extra virgin olive oil from We Olive because that's what we use. A little salt, maybe a tiny bit more. And I know there's people that would be screaming, oh, you should use white pepper, but I don't believe in white pepper. It's just I really looks. don't. Hmm? It's just for looks. It's just for looks, that's it. Oh, wait, shit. And now while it's hot, I'm almost forgetting the most important thing. The watercress. Oh, just like that, huh? Just like this. I just, what I want is I want the heat to influence this. I'm telling you, uh, I said this earlier to Lynn. I think watercress is the new arugula. If you like peppery bites of... Uh, Leafy stuff. This is where you want to go. You want to go to this. It's good. I mean, yeah. This is. Very I can too. really. I can smell this already. And oh, uh oh, I got trouble right here in River City. You see what's happening over there with the smoke on the. Okay, so just let the heat wilt this a little bit more. Okay, pull off a few more of these leaves. Toss them in. We're like two minutes away, boys. I want that thing screaming hot, which it's, it is. And here's what we're going to do. Max, you're out. What'd you say? Max is out. Max is out. His camera's out. Your camera's out. What's that mean? We got to fix that first? There we go. Okay, you're good. All right. So that wok is screaming hot. I'm using sesame chili oil here. And then I'm going to throw these scallops in. And it's going to smoke like a son of a bitch, but it's what you have to do. That's good, right? Yeah. Oh, yeah, that's good. This can stop now, I think. I'm trying to think. I mean, I really, I wanted this to be like super simple. I like the idea of just a plate of this with these little scallops on them. And maybe I'll just take a tiny bit of this chili oil and put it on the, the orzo just to give it a tiny bit of this same flavor that we've got there. And it'll pick up a little tiny bit of this red color, right? 
This is great because people got to realize that scallops don't take any time, at all, you know. And that took what, like 15 seconds? It did, but you know what happened? I threw so many of them in there. Now I'm kind of hold on. This is not right. Okay, these is we're calling this twice cooked, <laughs> twice cooked scallops. Here's what I want to do. Whoa. I want to I want to get this thing super hot again. <coughs> do you feel the chili? Oh yeah, the chili oil oh, got in the man. air. I'll tell you this. People. <coughs> oh my it's God. Intense. People think. Um, they can't cook Chinese food at home because they don't have the skills. It's not they don't have the skills. It's that they don't have the heat. That's the number one problem. I had this thing on here for a good five minutes. Got it super hot, but when I threw all those scallops in, it cooled it right down. And I want them to sear. I don't want them to like uh, <coughs> simmer. So I'm gonna let this thing get really hot again. We're almost there. So this by itself should be pretty tasty. Let's just find out. Mmm. Really good. <coughs> All right. Now just to finish these guys off. You see, I want the color and stuff, and when there's a the liquid in there, you can't really get that. This is what I want. That caramelization on the scallops is what this is all about. That's where oh, we're yeah. headed for this. Like now that. it's coming, right? That's great. Tiny bit more. Sorry, Max. <laughs> I'm glad I'm not in there right now. Mm-hmm. Maybe I should just make one small plate. Let me make one small plate. Watch like this. Oh, you can smell that from back here. Oh, yes. Okay. Here's where I'm going. And everybody back up. Max, stay where you are. Max, stay where you are. Okay, you're good. Should have sunk this through. I can't do anything without green onion. I honestly can't. It's a problem I have. I need to go to like a 12-step meeting for Green Onion Peak Freaks, <laughs> and that would be me. Hi, I'm Sam, and I love Green Onion. Hi, Sam. And then they would just talk to me about how I kick my Green Onion addiction. And by the way, I'm not making fun of anybody that have real addictions. It's just humor. Please take it that way. It was intended like that. All right. There. Oh yeah. Boom, that's it. Nice. And I know I do a lot of Asian inspired stuff, but I kind of like it and I would hope other people would like it too. <clears throat> Orzo watercress and sesame scallops, I guess is maybe what we'll call this. And I'll have a nice beautiful bite right there. A little bit of everything. It's, it's just crazy how delicious a few simple flavors can be combined. And you know what? The, ses the, the sesame chili oil does not in any way overwhelm the scallops. And it needed to be something strong because the, the watercress itself is really peppery. If you didn't do anything strong to the scallops, they'd just be lost in here. Oh, but they're not lost now, my friend. Mm. All right, this is really good. Okay, Friday, uh, Spring Pasta Week continues with more fun, more great food, and you guys are going to be right back here.
Thanks for hanging out with us. Go to weallof.com, check them out. Put my name Sam in at the little uh, buy nail box. You'll get 10% off anything you buy. Go to fixtureslivingcom or Fixtures Living on the Facebook. Check them out. They got a new store coming up. UTC here in San Diego in September. You're going to love it. We'll see you on uh, Friday. Thanks. Bye.